YMCA. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my bond slaves, both men and women. I will in those days pour forth my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Acts chapter 2, 17 to 18. On June 6th, 1844, George Williams founded the YMCA in London, England. In 1844, the emphasis of the YMCA was upon evangelizing young men. It was a non-denominational effort to meet your spiritual needs of young men who had come to the big city to make their way in the business world. George Williams was a country gentleman who had made the same trek into the city to engage in business. He was shocked by the moral degradation and, and he began Bible studies among his fellow workers. On June 6, 1844, Williams and 11 other young men formed the Young, Men, young Men's Christian Association. They rented a hall and sought to evangelize young men through lectures and exercise and innocent amusements. Their first great emphasis was on Bible study. The focus was on developing a healthy mind, body, and spirit. In 11 years, the organization went international. By the time of the death of Williams in 1905, the organization had a membership of 150,000 in England and nearly half a million in America. Hundreds of thousands of young men had their lives transformed by Christ through the YMCA. The YMCA has also spun off many other organizations. A number of colleges and universities began as extensions of YMCA endeavors. Springfield College, founded in 1885, was begun by an international training school for YMCA professionals. Sir, William, Sir George Williams University began as a night school at a YMCA. James Naismith, a Canadian, a Canadian, invented basketball while studying at the YMCA International Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts. In 1895, William J. Morgan from the YMCA of Holyoke, Massachusetts, invented the sport of volleyball. Volleyball and basketball, both invented in a YMCA. Wow! The first YMCA in North America was in Montreal, Quebec, and the first YMCA in the United States opened in Boston in 1851. The instigation of swimming, le swimming lessons and other activities for health and safety came out of the YMCA. During the Civil War, the YMCA provided nursing, shelter, activities, and spiritual support for soldiers on both sides of the conflict. During World War I, the YMCA provided canteens for soldiers away, away from the front. And during World War II, supported millions of prisoners of war in internment camps. The YMCA was one of six organizations that were two. They helped found the USO during, during World War II. And of course, to end it all off, the YMCA still does many wonderful things and still emphasizes a healthy mind and body. But little attention is given to the spirit. If you ask a YMCA in your area, if you have any YMCA in your areas, I suggest you go to the director and ask, ask to use the facility to conduct a Bible study and see what the response is. The Christian has been dropped from the title of the YMCA. According to their website, it is to be known as the Y. Their three focus areas are youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. The YMCA is only one of a number of Christian or organizations that have turned their backs on the reason they were created. Incredible. They were built upon the sacrificial giving of Christians. And then at some point made a choice to move away from their call to evangelize and disciple. As Christians, we have a stewardship and responsibility for the time, talent, and treasure that God has entrusted to us. We must be careful in financially supporting individuals and institutions with God's money to be sure that they are going to use those funds to build the body of Christ. Unfortunately, there are too many modern institutions of wolves. In sheep's clothing, of course. They have fleeced, fleeced well-meaning Christians. It is wise to ask, to, ask, to ask Christian organizations for a mission statement as well as an, as an exter, 
as well as an externally audited re report of their finances. In the parables of the talents that we read, the Lord returns from a far country and has his stewards give an accounting. Just like we're going to give an accounting at the judgment seat. To give an accounting of what they have done with their stewardship. We can learn from this that we will have to give an accounting. And the Lord expects us to invest in what, we, what will produce an eternal harvest. Lord, help me to invest the resources you have entrusted to me in ways that will produce fruit for eternity. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.